Hello everyone and welcome to this new installment of the Indoor Quality Society Talks. My name is Giovanni Fiore and today I would like to take you as back as the mid-1900, precisely year 1846, when Professor Ignaz Sommelweis, a, a doctor based in Vienna, made one of the most sensational discoveries that still applies today. In particular, he found that by simply washing your hands, not only you could avoid contracting a disease and save your own life, but you could also help other people's lives as well. However, the real astonishing fact here is that such a conclusion was made with no modern technology and little or no understanding of viruses and bacteria. In fact, some of us postulated that there must have been some sort of invisible particles on your hands that would be capable of transmitting the disease from one person to another. And he also postulated that by washing your hands, you could remove such invisible particles. Now, how does this relate to what I was going to show you today? You will see in one minute, but let us take a step back first. Across the globe, the understanding and demand for controlled indoor air quality is becoming, and has become really, a prominent topic around which the safety of workplaces, hospitals, and school is evaluated. While the ventilation requirements are agreed and set typically during the, the design phase of a building, the air movement is instead not always predictable by intuition. And this is mostly due to its turbulent nature. So air, when it moves, it creates a turbulent flow field. As opposed to, for example, intuitively understanding or guessing the main direction of the wind during a gust, it's impossible for the human brain to predict how turbulence evolves in time. And this is because air is invisible and the human brain is not built to process something that is invisible, as opposed to, for example, the way that we process the information in a book, in a video, or for example, during a class. Now, let's fast forward to the 1970s and now we have a technology breakthrough capable of representing and simulating air flows. This technology is called, even today, computational fluid dynamics, shortened as CFD. With CFD, you could now probe whatever part in the flow field, whatever point in the flow field, and extract meaningful information such as pressure, density, or temperature. Now, while CFD was created with the intent to aid the airplane design and assess forces like drag and lift, later on it populated many many sectors of the industries. For example, uh, life science, um, renewable energy and transportation and mobility. And because of its virtual nature, CFD can represent air and make air finally visible. Now imagine what Dr. Sommelweis could have done if he had CFD in 1800. Fast forward again to present days, and with that technology at hand, we asked ourselves, what can we do in order to simulate indoor air quality? What can we do in order to, for example, estimate contamination risks? In order to answer these questions, I would like to take you to a very, very special venue in France, La Philharmonie de Paris. So imagine now that you're sitting in the hall and watching your favorite show. If you had virtual reality, you would be able to see air moving down the stairways and on the balconies and gathering in the center of the hall and then moving towards the ceiling. If you now look at what happens in terms of velocity, you'll be able to see air gathering momentum which is velocity as it moves downwards and then slowly gathering in the center of the room. This is happening both for the left hand side and for the right hand side of the hall. And as you see, there's a mild um, current of air going upwards towards the ceiling. What's interesting here is that two seats do not experience the same comfort, for example, which means they don't experience the same velocity of the HVAC system, which is the air conditioning system, but they don't always show the same level of exposure to risks, potentially. 
which is something that in principle you cannot assess with your just just with your naked eye however how does this translate into our daily experience so for example if you go to the theater or to a cinema during a hot summer day when the uh, ventilation system is uh, set to a high level as soon as you stand up and you for example uh, go to the bar while the show is still being played uh, you will feel cold air on your legs and this is because of two reasons the first reason is that cold air will be heavier than hot air and therefore will remain closer to the ground and the second reason is that air will always find the path of least resistance which means that it will gather more velocity more momentum on the freer paths for example in this case we're talking about the staircases and it would not like as much to go through the people and through the crowd but now we switch gears and uh, we're now looking at an operating theater an actual operating theater based in the netherlands and what you see on screen here is the model that was created to represent the actual operating theater now the goal for this simulation was to assess the indoor air quality not only in terms of circulation of air but also in terms of how much the patient would be exposed to contamination so what was specifically simulated here was the laminar air curtain that was created on the ceiling of this room in order to keep the patient as safe as possible in terms of contamination towards particles and aerosols so the idea of this air curtain is to literally isolate the operating table from any contaminant that's generated by for example the medical staff so as you can see from the animations the clean air that's been pushed by the air curtains is then collected at each corner of the room and then filtered out now the question is what happens if we do introduce some contaminants in the simulation and so what we've done here is simulating the same environment but now with four emitters and these four emitters represent four doctors to each side of the table that are breathing while wearing masks so as you see the emitters are configured with not just one size of the particle but actually a distribution in size and this is to represent as close as possible what happens in reality so as you breathe out the particles that your body generates do not have one single size but in fact they have a distribution so what we're doing here is representing this range of sizes and as you can see from the animation a lot of these particles go straight to the ground but then many more actually remain aloft for like for a really long time however with these animations and with these simulations we were able to match experiments and show that virtually no particles hit the operating table and in fact the lighter particles while they still remain aloft they actually get entrained into vortices and stay there forever and do not interact with the patient so when you now look at the contamination rate close to the patient virtually no particle has hit the operating table and in fact as you can see in this plot the majority of the particles is entrained in the vortices and literally there's no trace of particles close to the operating table again this was uh, verified against experimental results and in fact it, re it resulted in a really good match now as you can see the number of possible scenarios that can be simulated with CFD is infinite so in this next application what we've done was simulating a what-if scenario for an actual hospital that's based close to Paris both during the winter season and during the summer season the animation shows the concentration of particles as they're being exhaled by the patients in a COVID ward during the winter season and as you can see the concentration of particles evolve over time based on the air conditioning system of the hospital and also the temperature of surfaces like windows and furniture as you'll see the concentration tends to evolve from one room to another 
But then the question that we asked ourselves was, what can happen if now the temperature outside the building is a lot warmer, so the windows get a lot hotter, and the HVAC system is set to a higher level. So this is the evolution of temperature, and as you can see, the warmer side of the hospital is the one facing the sun directly, whereas the opposite side is in the shadows. Therefore, the new natural convection that we simulated here promotes a stronger mixing of the airflows in the COVID ward. And if we translate this animation into the concentration of particles, so the so-called water vapor mass fraction, we now see that the mixture of particles is actually a lot stronger when uh, we're facing uh, summer conditions. Essentially, air travels more in the COVID ward and travels more between one room and another and also across the floor. And so we now switch gears, but we simulate a similar scenario for a university lecture hall. So as you see here, we went from the photographic evidence of an actual lecture hall and we translated that into CAD and that was translated into geometry and model of the simulation. In this case, what we wanted to see was how much time it takes for the room to become reasonably clear of contaminants. And so the approach here was to fully contaminate the flow in the, uh, in the lecture hall and then look at the time evolution of the air conditioning system as it flushes out the contaminated air. And as you can see here in this specific scenario, you have the fresh air coming from the ceiling through two main slots but it does require quite a lot of time. In fact, this simulation is in seconds, so it does require quite a lot of time for the contamination level to reach a reasonable um, value. And on top of that, the contamination does have a very different value depending on where you sit in the room. And specifically, the upper side of the hall tends to become a lot more clean compared to the lower side of the hall. So what is this telling you in terms of safety and uh, risk assessment for the students and the personnel there? This is telling you that you should not base your actions only on the nominal values provided by the manufacturer of the HVAC system. This is because typically during the design of a building, the KPI in mind is the number of renewals per hour of fresh air into a room. However, aerodynamics is a lot more complicated than that these animations and the previous ones show you that there will always be pockets of contaminated air despite the nominal values of the HVAC system. And with this, we conclude today's talk. We hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I also hope to see you again for the next Indoor Quality Society talk. Bye-bye. Thank you.